What's up everybody, I hope you're doing well. If you've been following along with this SEO deep dive series, then at this point you have a list of keywords that are targeted to your niche. And now we answer the question, what do you do with this list of keywords? Not to worry, in today's video, I'm gonna show you a full tutorial of exactly what I do every time I create a new page on my website in order to optimize it for a specific keyword. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there are a number of steps in today's tutorial, so I've created a handy dandy cheat sheet so that every time you create a new page on your website or if you're circling back to fix up an old one you can just go through the steps on the cheat sheet rather than having to watch this video because I have a feeling it's gonna be a little bit long it's worth it though now a little trade secret every time I start a new page on my website like a new blog post or it could be something like a new services page I start with optimizing it for a particular keyword and then after that, I go in and complete the content of that page. It kind of reminds me how back in high school, whenever we needed to do a paper in English class, the teacher made us do an outline before we then kind of filled in the outline with the actual paper. Similarly, when you optimize a specific page for a certain keyword, it kind of creates a built-in outline for that page, and the keyword is like your thesis statement. For the purposes of today's video, I'm gonna show you an example showing on-page keyword optimization for a blog post, but you can follow the same structure for your homepage, services page, and any other pages on your website as well. Now I will say that the majority of the tools that I reference in this video, you can access through most website builders. I use WordPress, but if you use Wix or Squarespace, you should be able to access most of these as well. Now let's dive in. Let's say I want to create a blog post targeting the keyword marriage counseling questions. Before I hop into it, I like to do just a little bit more research on this keyword. I'm going to show you a free tool called Answer the Public. Now the homepage of this website has this really creepy video of this dude, but I assure you it's legit and super helpful. So let's go ahead and type in our keyword and I've already done a little bit of snooping. There it is. So go ahead and scroll through and make note of various different items that people might be searching related to your keyword. We're gonna use these in our post. As I'm scrolling through, I'm particularly struck by this one that says marriage counseling questions to strengthen your relationship. I can almost feel the blog post coming out at me from that phrase. So that's the type of thing that we're looking for here. You can also see if there's other items that could potentially become like bullet points in your blog post. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to go ahead and open a new page or blog post, depending on what you're creating. Now, the very first step for on-page keyword optimization is to optimize our title for our keyword. We wanna make sure that the keyword appears in the title verbatim, but we also want it to be conversational and kind of enticing so that hopefully people will click on it when they see the title. Examples of enticing titles could be how-tos, lists, or a question. I think for our marriage counseling questions keyword, a list would be really helpful and pulling from answer the public. I like the title, five marriage counseling questions to strengthen your relationship. So it incorporates marriage counseling questions, which remember is our keyword. And then by adding the five at the beginning, it's just announcing that we're gonna get a list from this blog post. Next, we wanna optimize the header of the page. Depending on your website builder, there's probably an option to select a type of heading. We're referring to the H1 or heading one header. This signals to Google what the entire post is about. So let's select the level one header and I'm just gonna copy and paste my title and make that my level one header. That's it, I'm done. I'm not using level one headers for the rest of this blog post. I'll only be using level two and three headers as well as the text of the actual post. Next, we wanna optimize our slug, otherwise known as our URL. On WordPress, we can edit that right here up top, but on any website builder, it should give you the option to modify your slug. I know in some spaces, the default is to show the date right here. So if that's happening for you, delete it. It's not helping us. You do wanna make sure that your keyword is showing up. So here we have marriage counseling questions. Just make sure you get rid of any of the fluff that has nothing to do with what your post is about. Google also reads dashes as a space. So you wanna make sure that 
you have dashes between each word to signal to Google what your keyword is. Next, we need to optimize our image or images for SEO. And we're not gonna do a deep dive on images today, so just make sure you're using a copyright-free photo or your own photo. I like to use websites like Unsplash or Pexels to find a stock photo that we're allowed to use. All right, so I'm gonna use this photo from Unsplash. I'll go ahead and download it. So one piece you wanna address with your image is make sure that it's not too large so your images aren't slowing down your page load speed because that can ding your SEO. Before you upload your picture onto your website builder, you wanna change the title of your picture to your keyword. And remember, Google reads dashes as spaces, so stick dashes between each word. So we have marriage. So back to our blog post, it's time to add this photo. Let's go ahead and upload. Now every website editor has an option to alter the alt text of the photo. That is an important signal to Google telling Google what this picture is about and therefore what your page is about. So I like to repeat the same keyword right here as well. Okay, now we're ready to insert it into the post. The next piece to optimize on your page is the meta description. So the meta description is that piece of text that shows up in the Google search results right below the title of your page. So it's super important because it's another opportunity to entice people to go ahead and click on your page and read your post. And it's an opportunity to use your keywords to tell Google what your page is about. On WordPress, we just kind of scroll down to the bottom and we can find it here, edit snippet. Okay, this could probably be a bit catchier, but basically we wanna tell people what the post is about and also entice them to click through. Okay, now we're ready to scroll back up to the content of our page and it's time to write our hook. Every good piece of content on the internet has a hook. It's that blurb that you put at the beginning that tells readers what they're going to receive if they continue reading. Here's what you're gonna learn. Here's what I'm gonna help you with. Here's a how-to. You also want it to be a bit enticing, not clickbaity. We're not lying to people. And of course, in your hook, you want to include your keyword, and it's super important that your keyword plays out in a very organic way. So if I were writing this blog post, I might write something like, so it doesn't have to be too complicated, short and sweet, and just tell people and what they can expect by reading the article. And you'll see that we have our keyword right here. I can't emphasize enough that it needs to flow organically and conversationally in the text. You don't wanna just copy and paste the keyword everywhere. That used to work like 10 years ago, but it doesn't work anymore and it can actually hurt your SEO. Next, it's time to build the outline for your page whether it's a blog post or a services page, your H2 headers are important here. We don't want those level two headers to simply repeat your keyword over and over again, but it is helpful to have them live within the family of your keywords so that Google knows more about what your page is about. Think of these headers very similarly to the outline of that high school essay where you want some sort of intro statement, the main body of your piece, and then a conclusion statement. And this type of conclusion piece sets us up for the next aspect of on-page optimization, and that's links. Yes, we're not gonna dive into all the details of why, but having links on your page is super important. There are two types of links that you want on every single page, inbound links and outbound links. Inbound links refers to links to other things on your website. So for example, if I put a contact me link, that's an inbound link. Maybe I've already written other blog posts on this topic as well. I can link to those, those are inbound links. Outbound links refers to when you link to a website outside of your website. Not only is it super helpful for your SEO to have both inbound and outbound links, the anchor text is a key component of SEO optimization. When you're sending people to inbound inbound links, you want to include anchor text that targets the same keywords that you targeted on that page. It can be really easy to just say, check out my services page and have that be a clickable link, but that hasn't optimized for SEO. To optimize for SEO, we just wanna tweak it a little bit to target keywords on your services page. So at this point, go ahead and make a list of both inbound and outbound links that are relevant to your page or your post, and be mindful of that anchor text as well. And would you look at that? It looks like 
we have an outline for our page and it's already been optimized for SEO. Now, I know that this seems like a lot of work to do for every single page and every single blog post. The good news is this is super effective at boosting your SEO, makes it a lot more likely for your website to show up in organic search results for potential clients to find you, and bonus, you have an outline all set up so it can help you stay on track and actually deliver the content that people are looking for. Just like everything else in life, with a bit of practice, this becomes more ingrained over time. And at this point for me, it's basically muscle memory. And I probably spend about 20 minutes doing all of these steps when I sit down to write a blog post. Now remember, I do have a handy dandy cheat sheet linked below so that you don't have to memorize all of this and you can just follow along with the steps in the cheat sheet every time you create a new page or blog post on your website. Best wishes to you as you dive into on-page keyword optimization. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or stuck points and I'm happy to address them in the next video in this series. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. This video is brought to you by therapynotes.com. While you're busy worrying about optimizing your webpage for SEO, you don't need to be worrying about your practice management system because Therapy Notes offers a comprehensive system that now includes telehealth. Click the link in the description of this video to get two months to try it for free, including their telehealth beta platform. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well.